Hello there and welcome to Lower 6 Maths Over. This is the Applied Practice Paper G and here we're on a discrete random variables question number 4. Discrete, uh, the discrete random variable x has the probability function of k times 2 minus x for 0, 1 and 2, k times x minus 2 for x equals 3, where k is a positive constant, show that k equals 0.25. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build up a little table here of all of the outcomes on this probability uh, distribution. So the probability of getting 0, 1, 2 and 3 are going to be calculated from the probability distribution uh, function here. So when x is equal to 0, we're going to get 2 minus 0, which is 2, times by k so the probability of getting a 0 is 2 times k. Now we substitute in the 1, so 2 take away 1 is 1 times by k, and we get k. Uh, substituting 2 in now, 2 minus 2 is 0, so that'll just be a 0. Um, and we, we run out of the first one, so now x equals 3, so now it's going to be 3 minus 2 is 1 times by k, so we get a k here. And we know from our facts of uh, probability here that all probabilities must add up to make 1. So here we clearly have 4k equals 1, so therefore k equals 0.25. Okay. Part B, two independent observations, x1 and x2, are made of x. Okay, so for example, we could think of this as a four-sided dice with the values 0, 1, 2, and 3 on it. Um, and what we're looking to do in part B is show that the probability of adding our two rolls of our dice up and equaling 5 is equal to 0. Okay, so how could we make 5 out of the numbers from 0, 1, 2, and 3? Well, I can only see one way, and that's by doing uh, 2 add the 3. So the roll on the first dice may be 2, the roll on the second dice may be 3, or vice versa. However, the probability of rolling a 2 is equal to 0. So, let's do, it's a one mark question, so we just need a little explanation here. As the probability of x equals 2, there is no way in which x1 add x2 can equal 5 um, from the values we only have here really 0, 1 and 3 available. Okay, so that's the reason why the probability of x1 plus x2 can't equal 5. Okay, moving on to part C now. Find the complete probability function for x1 plus x2. So what this is, is this is a table of probabilities um, for the whole probability function. So what we could do here is effectively draw ourselves out a grid. Now we've only got the values... 0, 1, and 3 available to us. So what are our outcomes? We could have a 0, we could have a 1, we could have a 3 from when we add these results together. We could have a zero, sorry, 1 here, uh, a 2 here, uh, a 4 here, we could have a 3 here, a 4 here, and a 6 here. So on our probability distribution, we need all of these values in there. We need 0, and the probabilities will go on the bottom. We need a 1, we need a 2, we need a 3, we need a 4, and we need a 6. So these are all the different possible outcomes that can be rolled effectively when we roll our two of our dice that give us outcomes of 0, 1, and 3. Now remember here, the probability of rolling a 0 was 0 0.5. The probability of rolling a 1 was 
0.25 and the probability of rolling a 3 was also 0.25. How do I know this? Well, look back in the previous question. I've worked out k is 0.25 and I've got a 0.5 here, a 0.25 here and a 0.25 here. So, the probability of getting a 0 must therefore be, they'll have to roll a 0 and a 0, so this would be 0.5 times 0.5, we'll treat these as half times a half, so that would be a quarter. So the probability of them rolling at 0, when they add the two dice together, is a quarter. Now the probability of them rolling a 1, there's two different ways in which they can do this. They can either roll a 0, then a 1, or a, zero, or a 1, then a 0. The probability of getting a 1 is therefore going to be 2 times by the probability of getting a 0, which is 0 0.5, times the probability of rolling a 1, which is 0 0.25. So effectively what ha we have here is, um, is a half times a half, which is another quarter. So we have another quarter in here. Now the probability of rolling a 2, there's only one way that that can happen and that's going a 1 then a 1. So the probability of rolling a 2 is calculated by a quarter times a quarter, which is 1 16th. The probability of getting a 3, this can happen two ways. We can either get a 0 then a 3 or a 3 then a 0. So the probability of getting a 3 is going to be um, 0 0.5 so, or a half times by a quarter. This can happen in two different ways, so this is equal to a quarter. So we'll have one quarter here. The probability of rolling a four, that can happen in two different ways, a three then a one or a one then a three. So the probability of rolling a four is going to be two times the probability of rolling a one, which is a quarter, times the probability of rolling a 3, which is also a quarter, so that will be 1 eighth. So the probability here is 1 eighth. And the probability of rolling a 6, when you add these two values together, is going to be um, a quarter times by a quarter, which is 1 sixteenth. And you can always do a quick calculation here that all of these values should add up to make uh, 1. Okay, so find the probability that your summation between your two observations here is going to be in between 1.3 up to 3.2. I can only think of a couple of ways this will happen. Either they score a 2 or they score a 3. So the probability of being in between 1.3 to 3.2 is equal to 1 16th add 1 quarter, which is 5 sixteenths. Okay, so I do suggest that you think of this uh, theoretical uh, situation here as rolling dice. You've got outcomes of 0, 1, 2, and 3, and for probability distributions for discrete random variables, um, you can always think of this in terms of rolling a dice. So that's the hint for today's video then. Um, discrete random variables, think of it as rolling a dice. Okay, uh, eight marks for that.